I always have to wait a minute before this fucking thing starts recording because it gives me the little note that it's fucking recording and it's not. <sighs> How many of you are fucking like sick to death of goddamn clickbait? People who are serious about like trying to learn about fucking something and then they have to, uh, they have to put up with titles, like, you know, things like, um, how to write your novel in under 20 minutes. It was Simon Van Bui, his name is B-O-O-Y, I don't even know how you fucking pronounce that. If he was an honest person, one, he never would have written the title that way. If he was a good writer, two, he never would have written the title that way. Three, if he was worth anything, he never would have written the title that way. So, let's wipe him off our fucking hands. By the way, you should de I'm going to put the fucking link in the, in the description down below, and um, you should definitely watch his video until you feel like vomiting. And then you should stop... Uh, you know, and go do something that's sensible. I don't care how many books he's published. There's 20... Did you hear that slam? That's my fucking neighbors. They think that if you slam the door harder, that the American will jump out of his fucking pants and have a fucking heart attack so that they can move into your apartment. Anyway. Click here for clickbait. If that's what you want to do, click on Simon Van Boy. Hey, boy. Fucking idiot. I hate people who have to, like, you know, make clickbait. Because look at my shit. And here I am going to... Oh, oh, I'm going to edit this video. Not at all. Just so that I look good while I'm fucking doing it. What's the point? Fucking idiot. Can't write titles. The, it's the video that's 20 minutes. He can't write a sentence that makes fucking sense, but he's going to tell you how to write a novel because he knows. Write shitty sentences, but he knows. He stands there fucking during this video like he's playing with puppets and fucking shit. And, and it's nonsense. It's not even fucking good puppet playing. If, if you've ever seen good puppet playing, good puppets are fun. I like puppets sometimes I use myself as one I put my hand into the back of my head and make my mouth move but he's an illiterate dumb fuck that's all I have to say about him and of course he's published 25 books and he's probably really successful with them and God bless him because whatever God he has Whoever blessed him, like they, they, they fucked up. I, I could I could show you ten better writers that I've worked with, that you know that get completely uh, ignored by publishing houses, and um, and I can tell you that with uh, certainty because this guy was the most boring motherfucker I've ever heard in my entire life, even with puppets. And if you can be boring with puppets, holy God, have you gone beyond the edge. So, let's talk about something that makes absolutely something sense, since we're four minutes in, and I want to do this video before tomorrow, so that I can publish it tomorrow, and notice I'm still wearing the same fucking shit that I wore earlier today, making the video that I definitely carefully plan out. Although I did change my glass. You, um... Editing. We've, we've talked about development editing before because I was lashing into that other fucking dimwit. Um... I forget who it is. But my friend so pointedly told me he said, Why is the first person you're picking on black? And I'm like... Fuck, I didn't even notice his skin color. It had nothing to do with that. It just had to do with the fact that he was an idiot. 
I was picking on idiot. It's like the fucking girl that I picked on. She was an idiot. The fucking all right. Now I'm picking on a white. I, I think he's white. I have no idea. I can't tell actually from the video. He's sort of a, a sort of white guy with curly black hair. So he may not be exactly white. <laughs> Why the fuck do I have to care about things like that? If you want politically incorrect, go to the politically incorrect clickbait me fucking son of a bitch channel. Because then you can all sit there with your little soft flowers and crinkly nubbins and fucking all this shit that doesn't matter. And have people who say nothing that's offensive and actually make no progress whatsoever in doing anything in your entire life. Because that's much more interesting than listening to someone like me who made something of his life and then fucking turned that around into a spiral into nowhere. But fuck that. Um, well, actually, that that sort of changes a little bit as I go along. Oh my god, my red face. It must be this light. Fuck that light. That light's off now. It looks a little less red. Anyway, talking about editing, um, sort of, how did I get, like, from there to here? It's because he was so boring, he wasn't even worth talking about. Imagine that. I watch videos, I watch videos on writing all the time. Why? Well, partly because I'm, I'm writing a book about writing, not for me. No, this is not necessarily how you make money. You make money by writing books for other people who pay you. We're still getting to that video. Yeah, like most of the books that you read, I think half of them are fucking ghost written. At least as far as I know. I get paid by the word. Anyway, editing and writing sort of go hand in hand. And if you haven't figured that fucking thing out yet, that's that's all right. You know, you may be, you know, earlier in your career, or career, let's not call it a career. You might be earlier in your exploration of writing. I like that way better. And, um, you may need to learn the fine art of editing. But, son of a bitch, fucking people make more noise around here. You may not even be able to hear it, but, anyway... I was introduced to writing a long time ago when I was trying to fucking publish short stories and um, was having some sort of luck, you know. And short stories were the thing in literary magazines at the time. I know that that's print, and most people don't know what the fuck that is now because there's online, which anybody can get published online. It doesn't. There's so many fucking outlets. It's ridiculous. But then it was a challenge. It was hard to do. And to get attention of people who were important in the industry was even harder to do. And um, at one point, I, um, I sent a message to... No, I sent a message. I sent a story uh, to uh, a magazine called The Quarterly that, that was being edited by a rather famous editor called uh, Gordon Lish and Lishy uh, he he read through my work and um, didn't mark anything up didn't didn't fucking tell me what to do he sent me back a little pretty much a post-it note it was a little bit bigger than a post-it note and then had his you know logo on the top there or bottom I can't remember the top or the bottom but I know he used red ink And he said, uh, stick to your objects. And he put his L at the bottom. And that froze me on another story for like 20 fucking years. I didn't know what to do with it. Um, in the meantime, the fucking magazine went out of business. And I never really looked at it again. I looked at it again 20 years later. And... It was a pretty good story. I had no idea what he meant by stick to your objects. Um, but apparently, Gordon, Gordon, I'm gonna, I'll link a, a, a I'll link to one a, a video about Gordon's 
editing style, which is sort of funny. He, he's slash and burn. He's pretty much like me uh, when it comes to editing, because when I edit for other people, I fuck them up. I swear to God, it's just like they, they, they look at me and go like, oh my God, you just like wiped out half my words. I'm not going to have any left. And the reason for that is half of your words are fucking boring. Now, why am I bringing this up? I'm trying to make this video short. You don't want to write clickbait. You don't want to... Spanish fucking people. They fucking think that every time they need to... Every time they can make a noise, they have to. You don't even know what time it is. It's fucking 6.04. Oh, all right, so they're off siesta now. They've, they've, they've woken up from their sleep. They've had their next beer, and everybody feels okay. So now it's time to make noise with your fucking motorcycle. Bunch of idiots. I shouldn't slam on Spanish people. It's a nice country. It's too bad Spanish people live here. Isn't that enough to get you killed by the Spanish Mafia? Probably. Anyway, so we started out with the fucking guy. <laughs> the fucking guy who doesn't know how to write a title, but he's written 27 books, and, and he'll tell you how to write one in 20 minutes, even though what he meant was the title of the video is going to be write a book in 20 minutes, which he didn't write. So he turned it into clickbait, and now we're on Gordon Lish. How we got from there to here, I have no idea, except for the fact that I'm... Sort of stream of consciousness. The conscious. I'm running at a stream. I have a stream of consciousness. <clears throat> but what editors do? Real editors, not fucking the ones that like are an imaginary thing in the back of your head that like hack and slash like Gordon Lish and turn you into something that you're not. Which is why I had that problem about that story, which I I sent to him. Because he wanted me to do something to it that I didn't want to do. He wanted me to stick to one fucking object. And he didn't understand the fact that, like, that wasn't what I was writing. And if he wanted me to write like everybody else that he was training, then it was useless to work with him. Now, that's very strong words from an idiot whose name recognition is fairly low. It's an understatement, you know, sort of like a TED talk. And, um, you know, I could have kowtowed a little bit and said, oh, he wants me to stick to this one object and keep that. But my whole thing with fiction is to work with multiple objects and weave them together. So that's what I do. It's how I'm not the same as everybody else. So I like to keep that, regardless of the um, fact that one of the most revered editors in the history of American literature told me to do something else. So I was true to my own fucking word, and maybe someday it'll pay off, and maybe someday it won't. But, that's what editors do. Editors, editors uh, are, are uh, revered for cutting out your bullshit. That's what I do to other people. I cut out their bullshit because most, but most of the time it isn't just, you know, that they've overwritten something. It's that it's just bullshit. There are too many fucking words, and um, you know, like when 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 they get it, you know, they send me an eighty thousand ma eighty thousand word manuscript, and I turn it around, and they've only got you know forty three left. Well. That's because you only deserve to have 43. Writers need to be their own editors. They need to look at what they've fucking done and think about it. And then actually do something to fix it to make it better. And if I finally offered a bit of advice, that was it. If you don't want an editor to fucking get into your work and change it around... Why not fucking fix it yourself? I don't think that's a fucking grand, you know, uh, revelation. You, you, you know, a, a lot of people think that, oh, because I wrote it, it was special and it has to be there. Well, no, 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 and no again. Stick to your objects. <laughs> fucking, 
<laughs> go ahead and list the words that haunt me. Um, you don't have to stick to your objects. You can, you can be creative. You can do something new. You can, you can try something different, but you don't... If you're doing it, make sure that you do it with purpose. Fucking get in there with a little knife and cut out all the extra hads that you don't need. Cut out all the fucking passive voice that you don't need. Cut out all the fucking, you know... James said excitedly. Fucking cut out every... So we get down to James said. If it's excitedly, we'll know from what's in the fucking sentence, hopefully. And if we don't know from the sentence that he spoke, then you fucked up the sentence that he spoke and you better write it better. That's all. Be efficient in your writing by writing well. That's not a fucking puzzle. And that's mostly what I do when I work with people and I, I you know, help them with editing the work. Is pretty much trimming shit down so that they... They do what they fucking phone again. They do what they already did, but neater and more efficiently. And um, a lot of people have the perception that editors go in there and hack your shit to pieces, which is the name of the video, pretty much that um, I'm going to give you for Gordon Lish. That's not what editors do. Editors do that when they want to be the writer. And I don't think that's the normal way for that to happen. At least not if you're an editor that has any fucking iota of um, self-worth or uh, respect for the writer. So, I hope that put a few things to rest. But, um, in the long run, and this is old news... Like for those of you rookies who've never heard it before, writers need to be editors. When you get through that fucking first draft, it's not done. I have this problem with people all the time when I ghostwrite for them. You know, like I, I'll send them a draft of something and they'll go like, oh, well, it's really good except for this. And they'll point out like one word on the third page and they. No, 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 look, look, look. We're not worried about one word on one page and, like, you know, someplace in the manuscript. We're worried about the whole idea because we want it to be close to where it's supposed to go. And they're like, oh, yeah, no, it's close. To, that's fine. And then you fix all that shit later. When I was working with Macmillan, they had five fucking editorial passes. Five! Where they would go through and they'd rake you over the coals and go... Okay, you know, now we're going to do a development edit. Then we're going to do um, organizational, like, whatever the fuck this is. And then, you know, we're going to have you come into a committee with fucking... There was so much editing that went on. Oh, gosh, even editing the contracts were funny. Because that would take three months, and then they would want the book in one and a half months. Six weeks. And that would actually happen. But anyway, what writers need to do, and this is not clickbait, what writers need to do is be their own good editors. And when you fucking learn to do that, oh my god, you don't need people like me. You need to read over your own shit, read it out loud, read it out loud, because you don't use a little fucking voice in the back of your head that just goes, because it's a little monotone piece of shit. When you involve your mouth, your tongue, your ears, your eyes, not really your nose, but you, you, you involve additional senses in what's going on on the page, that actually makes you involved more with the work that you're actually writing. And if I could have said a second valuable thing today, that was it. So there we go. I'm going to get this in in under 20 minutes now because I want to be just like... Simon Van Bui was some fucking genius who can't write a sentence that even in the title of his fucking video. Hate me, describe me, just fucking do whatever you want.